Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Let me bring your attention to a very, very good fight between a Mexican and a Nicaraguan. And I'm not talking about Estrada versus Chocolatito 3. There was one on the undercard, kind of slipped under the radar on the zone. Um, and I want to, I think you should take a look at it. You know, this is a good fight. Uh, it was between, uh, again, Nicaraguan, 28 uh, year old Christopher Rosal. Christopher Rosales and um, the previously undefeated Joselito Velasquez from Mexico. 15 wins, no defeats, one draw. Rosales, 35 wins with 21 KOs, six defeats, only one by stoppage, no draws. Now, uh, Velasquez was, was being, uh, shall we say, uh, groomed, if you like, as the uh, as a big star. And Rosales was brought in to lose, okay? To give him rounds, but to lose. Now, think about it. Let's go through there. Let's just have a little recap on their, on their histories. Because Rosales, maybe, you may remember him if you're in the UK like I am. Because he came over as WBC World Flyweight Champ. That was a fight he won. Uh, that was a title he won in 2018. He came over to uh, Windsor Park, uh, Belfast actually not England, and he smashed up Paddy Barnes, stopped him in four rounds. He then lost on points to Charlie Edwards, lost his title, a WBC World Flyweight title. And since then, um, I mean, he fought he fought for the, the title again against uh, Julio Cesar Martinez and was basically swarmed all over and stopped in nine rounds. And that was in 2019. And you could think, well, you might think, well, he's at the end of his career, at least at world level. Well, you'd be wrong because... At that point, when he lost to um, when he lost to Edwards, I think he was only uh, what was he like twenty five or something, twenty four. And again, he, you know, okay, he, he lost um, in twenty nineteen to Martinez, ninth round KO. But uh, again, he was only in his mid twenties. So what he did was sensibly he wanted to carry on. So he rebuilt. Um, he won all of his fights apart from one against a guy called Angel. Uh, La Dezabel, I've, I've massacred that name. I can't even pronounce it. La, La Dezabel, La, yeah, him. Um, previously undefeated guy, still undefeated. I think thirteen nearly was at the time, and he he lost. He beat uh, Rosales on a unanimous decision over twelve. But that's the only defeat since being smashed up by um, by Martinez. So he's had a good little run, and he was brought in as the opponent, even though he's a year younger for Joselito Velasquez to look good against. Now, they do say uh, there's no substitute for life experience. And there's an awful lot of truth in that. And I think this fight was a perfect example of how experience or why experience is so important in life, in a fight, in everything. Because it looked to me like the much fancied Velasquez, who was coming off um, a very good win, very impressive earlier this year, very impressive um, six round TKO of, of Jose Soto. It did look like he was kind of out of his depth against Rosales in the sense that Rosales looked so much more um, composed, so much more um, mentally, he had more nous, shall we say. Um, Rosales was picking his punches better. Velasquez looked like he wanted to just get stuck in and knock him out, knock out Rosales. Rosales was in no shape or form intimidated or um, his confidence wasn't diminished. He was very confident, very, very poised, boxed very well. Um, the on-rushing, um, highly aggressive Velasquez looked to get in close to land big hurtful punches. Rosales at no point looked like he was about to roll over or unravel. Um, he countered well. And as the fight progressed, um, it didn't look to me like Velasquez had much of a plan B. Uh, it looked to me like he was essentially being outboxed in a very textbook manner, which is not to say that it was all counterpunching from Rosales. It wasn't. There was there was some lovely offensive work as well, some lovely combinations, and it, when they landed, it it I got the impression that Velasquez wanted to immediately reply, 
but didn't really know how to. He'd have to sort of take a break, reset. Whereas when Velasquez was coming forward, when he landed a punch, there was an immediate reply from Rosales. He knew what punches to fire at what point. And I put this down to having had four world title fights, fought under big lights before, travelled a lot, been in England a couple of times, went to Belfast. You know, yeah, he lost a few. He's got six defeats on his record. But this is a guy who has learned kind of on the road. And when he faced Velasquez on the zone, he was the underdog. It didn't phase him because he's got that experience. He's got that life experience. And boxing experience and life experience, they can go hand in hand. Because a lot of it, a lot of the mental side of it is fighting under the big lights, being the underdog um, and staying dedicated, staying focused. All that sort of stuff comes into it, obviously. But it looked to me, even though Rosales was a year younger, that he was so much more experienced than Velasquez. And Velasquez, this was a jump up too quick. Now, that's not to say that Velasquez can't look at this 10-round defeat, unanimous defeat, clear defeat, and say, you know what, I can learn from that. I can come on strong, just as Rosales has done. Because defeats, well, they, they still talk about them in the, you know, the making or breaking of you. If you accept that, okay, I, do, I was defeated. How was I defeated? What did I do wrong? What did I not do? What did I do right? What do I have to work on? All this stuff. That seems to me that Rosales has done that within his career. And it's now up to Velasquez to go away and do the same thing. This was a bridge too far, a jump too quick, maybe a jump up too quick. Um, but he can come back, Velasquez. But all three judges had this, 97-93. And I did 97-93 as well. I watched it live. I scored it. When they said 97-93, I thought, isn't it lovely to actually agree with the judges for one occasion? Because we're all, a lot of us just say, well, you know, bloody judges, what were they watching? Yeah, I agreed with the judges. They all had it 97-93. That's exactly what I had. I'd like to see their cars to see whether I picked the same rounds that they did, whether the, you know, the rounds coincided. But some good judging, even, you know, and fair play because um, Velasquez was the favourite, um, but he was clearly outboxed and outthought. And... Not necessarily out fought. I mean, Velasquez didn't stop trying. He did fire hurtful punches. But he just didn't have the variety. He didn't have the imagination. He didn't have the experience. Experience gives us a mental toolbox in which we put tools in and we take them out and we instinctively know which tools to take out to deal with which situation that arises. Rosales, battle-hardened, been on the road. He has that. Velasquez didn't look to me like he had that. Maybe he can learn, pick up a few tools, put them in his mental toolbox, pull them out at a later date. That's life. Anyway, check out this fight because it is a nice little, you know, even though I say it could a clear win for Rosales. Uh, there was lots of action in it. It was a good fight. Um, and yeah, it's on the zone. Have a look at it. Tell me what you think. Leave your comments below. Um, again, these are smaller guys. You know, those anything from minimum weight up to bantam i mean there's so many fantastic matchups and fights in those weights you should check them out check this one out anyway it's on design leave your comments below subscribe to the channel if you're new hit the subscribe button it costs you nothing hit the like button if you like the video hit every button you can see go on push the bell out anyway enjoy the rest of your weekend thanks for watching we will speak again soon bye bye for now